Okay, so third time in the Matt Dillahunty Jordan Peterson debate, take three. And as they say here in America, third time is a charm. Third time is a charm, little children. So let's check it out, shall we? Now, one thing that Matt Dillahunty was already starting to talk about, and he made a, a response video that he posted this Sunday, and one of the things he started to say is that Jordan Peterson kind of strawmanned him. And lo and behold, I agree with Matt. He, Jordan Peterson did kind of strawman him, and it was somewhat frustrating and exasperating to watch. One of the things that he kept doing, for lack of a better word, I will say that he kept skepticking him. Kept trying to skeptic him, skeptic him down to like, you know, nothing. You keep skeptic and keep skepticking. You know, how do you know that you're even a person thinking these thoughts? How come you're not skeptical about that? How do you know that there's even a room here? And it was so exasperating to, to experience. And I'm not sure if Jordan Peterson watches enough of these videos, these, these apologetic atheist type uh, forum back and forth to know that that is just a classic, really tedious Christian line of inquiry, and it's not going to work on Matt Dillahunty, and it's not going to be, it's not going to lead to any sort of revelations or anything interesting. And he was kind of going down, he was kind of grabbing onto it because, you know, I, I don't think he's really that well versed in these, as, as well educated he is in the areas that he is, and a lot of people were saying, Matt. Jordan Peterson is charlatan. That is absolutely absurd. Not even close. I just don't think he really, he's he obviously not that familiar with Matt Dillahunty's main arguments. Um, he didn't seem to know him all that well. And so he had no idea how fruitless it was to keep skepticking away. Um, why'd he do it, though, is the more important question. Well, here's what I, here's what I see as to why he did it. Jordan Peterson's main point when it comes to religion and defense of religion, there's a reason he's doing it, there's a reason he does it so passionately convinced, because he is passionately and completely convinced that religion in general, and Christianity in particular, is of extraordinarily value to the society that we live in, and it helped produce where we are today, and he sees it as essential to where we are today. Um, the moral, he, he has a lot of... You know, Matt Dillahunty has talked about some things he does called deepisms, and he definitely does do them. And he's a little bit too schooled in being, in sounding cerebral with vagueness, with saying things that sound really, really cerebral and, you know, profound. And then when you air them down, they're just kind of airily vague and not really all that substantive. But the main thrust of his argument... The main reason why he is now making these circuits kind of involving himself in a form of apologetics is that he's actually passionately convinced that religion in general, Christianity in particular, was absolutely morally essential to where we are today as a culture. That there was something in the Bible stories themselves, even the Old Testament. That's where a lot of his lectures are based on the Old Testament. And he's trying to find something. He says that these stories are instructive, the, and he talks about it in a way that at first glance sounds like one of these vague, airy-fairy word salads. You know, he said, when asked why, he says, well, it's essential to the metaphysical substrate, and you roll your eyes immediately, oh, brother, the metaphysical, metaphysical substrate, this. But when he starts actually explaining what he means by the metaphysical substrates, there's, real, there's a real there there, and there's a real foundation there. And, and his, his, his ideas on the subject are closely related to Nietzsche's. Actually, he talks about Nietzsche a lot, and it's something I've talked about in my videos about Nietzsche a lot, uh, without going too much into it. When Nietzsche said, God is dead. He wasn't saying, God is dead, let's all celebrate and become atheists. He was saying, God is dead, let's all run and hide, because we needed him. <laughs> we needed religion to found... We needed... God is dead is a rallying point for our culture. God is dead is an intellectual idea that is going to rally our civilization, and we needed him. And he predicted the nihilism of the 20th century, and lo and behold, we had it. Boom. That's, that's the, the idea that Jordan Peterson borrows heavily from Nietzsche and, and is trying to expand upon in ways that are actually going to prove very fruitful. But he is running into a problem, and this is why he tried to straw man Matt Dillahunty. 
because when asked to answer, Matt Dillahunty gives him, okay, I'll, I'll hand you this, right here on the silver platter. Religion is potentially useful. I'll agree with that. Doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's true. Now that's completely a 100% true statement. And Jordan Peterson tried to answer with, okay, let me play a little Christian apologetics games and try and catch you to admit that God is real. It's the same way, you know, same way fake ass Christian apologetics people do it. And they do it for the same reason. Um, Jordan Peterson is becoming passionately convinced of the truth of, of what he is dealing with. But he's not a Christian, per se. He's a kind of, sort of Christian. He's where most people are at. You believe in God? Eh, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. I believe there's some sort of moral force that holds, you know, that sort of stuff. He's one of those. He hasn't had a revelation that Jesus Christ is real, and he's, he's not one of me. He's not an actual Christian Christian. People say to me, are you a Christian? Yeah. You want to know Jesus? <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. With him, it's still kind of vague and wishy-washy. He kind of sort of believes. Maybe he's a 65% Christian. It's really obvious in the debate. But there's a circle that he's trying to square. And it's, it may be that that circle that he is trying to square requires a leap of faith. When, when Matt Dillahunty says just because something is useful doesn't mean it's true, I, say, I would say to Matt Dillahunty, plain, simple, and plain English without hemming or hawing or trying to straw man it, but it is true. Then when he says, I, how do you know? Because that'll probably be his next question. Yeah, he's trying, to, he's, trying to, he's trying to mess with me. He's trying to bring down my argument, bring down my, my house of cards. Um... So far, is there a better answer than faith? I just know, Matt. Believe. <laughs> I just know. You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure if that question can be answered with absolute sincerity and honesty and conviction without saying a leap of faith. Now, Jordan Peterson is trying to circle that square, but at root, what he is still saying is a leap of faith. He is coming to a faith-based conclusion. That, and Matt Sillahunty says, just because these stories are useful... So check it out. Matt Dillahunty counters with just because these stories are useful doesn't mean they're true. Jordan Peterson starts countering with a, with a potentially successful line of reasoning. How could they possibly be as useful as they are if they weren't in some way deeply, deeply true? That's a really potentially successful line of, of inquiry, a successful comeback. How could they possibly as use, be as useful as they've been? They have been the foundation of our entire civilization. How could they possibly be as useful as they've been if they aren't on some level deeply, deeply, deeply true? That's the path to realization. Because that's really the crux of the matter. Not... How do you know what you believe is true? How do you know you're standing in the stage with me? If you fell out, you know, this whole line of cockamamie, half-assed apologetics inquiry where you try to put, put it back on the atheist. Don't. We, if you're a Christian apologist, don't. Don't put it back on the atheist. They say you got the burden proof, say fine. Man up. I accept it. I have the burden proof. I'm not going to prove it to you in this sitting. Matter of fact, I said in one of my ch YouTube chats... I, honest to God, don't care if you walk away believing that God is real. It's not my life. It's yours. I don't give the flyingest fig if you walk away from the table believing that I'm telling you the truth or not. But I am going to tell you the truth, so help me God. If you ask me the truth, I'm going to tell you. So old saying goes, don't ask me nothing about nothing. Just might tell you the truth. Now, it's possible the best answer. Now, I'm, going to, I, I, I'm going to work on this. Because, as Jordan Peterson will, because he's trying to come up with, a, with an answer based in science and reason. Not leap of faith. But so far, the best answer that Jordan Peterson has, which he wouldn't, he wouldn't cop to in the, in the debate, is leap of faith. I just know it in my heart. <laughs> he, he, might, he might as well have said that because he wanted to. I just know it in my heart. I just know it in my heart, dude. Why are you so hard-hearted, Matt? 
Open your heart to the Lord, you'll know it too. You know, should have just said that because that's kind of what he was getting at. Um, is it possible that this can be answered scientifically, empirically, on a stage? No, probably not. Maybe. We'll see. But it can be answered honestly, that's for sure. And maybe that's enough. We'll see. Stay tuned.